the subprime mortgage crisis. It is a world economic and financial depression of unimaginable, unfathomable proportions. It is a genocidal event in itself. It brings with it genocide. If there were 40,000 people dying every day in the third world two years ago, I'm sure it's double that today. Nobody knows because there are no statistics that fast. At the heart of the bubble, 1.5 quadrillion of derivatives. Derivatives, yes, derivatives. The, the tangible word. They talk about toxic assets, these complex instruments, poisonous paper, whatever they call it. It means derivatives. It means structured investment vehicles, collateralized debt obligations, credit default swaps, mortgage-backed securities, asset-backed securities, auction rate securities, on and on and on. All of them paper based on paper. Paper based on paper. That's what a derivative is. The only approach to 1.5 quadrillion is not how do you feed it? How do you destroy it? My proposal, delete. Hit the delete key. Shred it. For the holidays, I recommended Bonfire and Yule Log of the derivatives. <laughs> we can have the, no, the maypole of the derivatives. The, the derivatives have got to be wiped out. There is no end to this. How can you bail out 1.5 thousand trillion, 1.5 quadrillion of derivatives with these small sums that don't even get up to a trillion, right? 700 billion, it can't be done. What I do know is that the 30 billion that was given to Bank of America, which will be burned through within about six hours of derivatives losses, given to the state of California, would have saved lives. And that is what I think we have to, we have to fight for. In other words, this administration, this new regime, is the most concentrated version of Wall Street power I have ever seen in my life. And we've got to begin to fight them immediately, because we are now, as of tomorrow, in the 100 days to something that looks very much like the Mussolini fascist corporate state. That is the goal. Now, the, the first round of the talk was completely squandered. The second round ought to be immediately seized, clawed back from Bank of America, and given to the states. Every state has a budget crisis. California is 50 billion, New York not far behind. You go through it all, add it all up, you'll get close to the 350 billion. Not one penny for Wall Street banks. Those banks are all, they're all bankrupt. If you watch the television today, the whole market went down 4%, but J.P. Morgan Chase and Citibank went down 20% in one day. 20%. Now, Citibank has been bailed out twice. Once with the original talk, once with a special bailout. Now they want a third bailout. The other one, of course, J.P. Morgan Chase, the flagship of the entire operation. They are, they'll be getting their second round of the bailout, but it won't work. J.P. Morgan is the biggest derivatives monster in the world. Their derivatives amount, in my estimation, to 300 to 400 trillion dollars. Remember, the gross national product of the United States, 15 trillion. A lot of that is hot air, too, but just to get an idea. Say it's 300 trillion, it's 20 times the gross national product of the United States in just derivatives at J.P. Morgan Chase. So that's where the money should go. That is not where the money will go. If you saw the Washington Post on Friday, the headline, Obama Promises Entitlement Reform. I recommend that you read this article. It is absolutely essential. It is an article where he talks about the fact that his new slogans are no longer hope and change, but they're what we knew all along. His slogans are responsibility, duty, and sacrifice. Sacrifice. I didn't hear sacrifice in the election campaign. Now I hear it when he talks to the Washington Post editorial board. And the area of sacrifice that he's going to have is what he calls the entitlements. That means your economic rights that were fought for by the labor movement and by all sorts of people in this country, and were then gotten, they were ran through the Congress and so forth, with the help of Roosevelt during the New Deal. He wants to take those away. He wants to take them away. So what's going to happen is the looting, the sacking, and the pillaging of Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And where will that money go? You think it's going to go to the poor? You think it's going to go to the destitute, to the welfare checks of California? No, no, no. It's going to go to the people who own this regime, and they have names. Soros, David Rockefeller, Goldman Sachs. That's what you've got. You've got a banker's dictatorship. 
The Republican Party, of course, is also a party of Wall Street, but it's got a large element of low-wage southern sweatshop employers who don't want to be taxed for Wall Street. That's where you see this interesting resistance that comes out of the Republican Party. It's always wrong-headed. It's always destructive. It's reactionary. It's based on the Austrian school. Oh, my God. But even there, they don't go along with Wall Street as much as what we've got right now. I can go through the cabinet for you and tell you which banks own them. Obama, as I said, it's clear. Soros, Goldman Sachs, David Rockefeller, the Trilateral Commission. Biden is owned by NBNA Bank of Delaware. It's a credit card gouging operation. If you have one of their cards, they have the highest rates, the most draconian penalties, and so forth. The Secretary of the Treasury, the most important job in the present time, Geithner, is owned by the Goldman Sachs Citibank clique. And that same Goldman Sachs Citibank clique that was clustered around Rubin includes Larry Summers, the economic czar in the White House, the man, of course, who thinks that women are genetically inferior and can't do science, but he thinks he can. He's the, the, uh, the president of Harvard who talked like a gangster. Remember him? And then you've also got Paul Adolf Holger. Really somebody, it's like bringing back, it's like bringing back Robert McNamara or some genocidalist of the past to, to be the Pentagon. This was the guy with the 23% prime rate who destroyed the U.S. industrial base back under Jimmy Carter and opened the door to the long reactionary nightmare of Reagan, Reagan, and Bush. So this is what you have. Uh, and the words that Obama used to the Washington Post editorial board were, and let's see if you remember this, he said, I'm going to use my political capital to get entitlement reform done. Now that phrase about political capital, does that ring a bell to everybody? Yeah. That's exactly what Bush said when he was elected. So hope and change turned out to be the same despicable program of looting and pillaging and sacking people that we had tried under right-wing auspices, the neocon right-wing cover crew tried it. They didn't succeed. Now we have a one-party dictatorship, and they're going to do it to you under left cover. And they're going to say, it's the wonderful feeling of joining together in sacrifice, that the living standard has been too high. You've all been much too greedy. You've been selfish pigs. Think about those people in Africa. Think about the polar bears. Think about global warming, and therefore, sign away your economic rights, because you've already signed them away. So I think this is a, this is a terrible situation. Now, just in terms of the... Uh, the economics, I think that's sort of it. It's, it's going to be the Wall Street dictatorship. And the simple idea is they will flay you alive. Obama will flay you alive and convoy that money into the Wall Street derivatives bubble. It will be futile and it will never end. And the only way out of this is to fight it. So hope and change have been replaced by responsibility, duty, and uh, sacrifice. sacrifice. Now, in terms of the, uh, the foreign policy, you, you, of course, remember that Obama was the most bellicose of all candidates. He was the only one that I can see who ran on the explicit platform of wanting to bomb a country, and not just any country. He wanted to bomb Pakistan with 160 million people, nuclear weapons, and some medium-range missiles that can deliver them, a very large Islamic country. He demanded that in Chicago in July of 2007, you remember Senator Clinton said, oh, no, that's too much. McCain said, oh, no, that's too much. Even Bush said, that's too much. But that policy has now been implemented because, of course, this was not the shifting of power here today. The real power shift occurred about a year ago when Bush, Cheney, and the neocons were put out to pasture and were sent to doing photo opportunities with grade school classes. And the power went into the hands of the principals committee, meaning Gates, meaning Rice, 